Just up, Chad. I'm just going to hold the seat and keep it warm for just a second. <laughs> Funny guy. Funny guy. No, he's about to come back up here in a second. So, All right, the study of the eschatological events and the, and the revelation. I'm sorry, I've got to take this off. I'm in a jacket today and it is warm. Hey, look at that beer. <laughs> so, week number five, as you see, we're going to look at the introduction, basically chapters one through four. Five today, and it's going to be a cram packed study as Moses will continue to say. Hey, go find us on YouTube, it's under his, not mine and his, but his page. Um, put it on social media if you have Facebook, copy the link to social media, get it out that way. Um, those that have been in the study, I think y'all have enjoyed it. This is a great study to share um, because it definitely deals with um, the non-believers and the believers. And there are no commercials. Yes, and there is no commercials. No commercials. So let's look at it. The brief introduction of Revelation, or to Revelation. The... Book of Revelation is about the apocalypse, right? That's going to happen. The apocalypse means revelation of Jesus Christ. You look at Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Jesus has revealed the vision of heaven to the apostle John, sent a message to the churches, and announced the future. So if you think about it, Jesus is revealed in the vision of heaven, all right? And it was given to the, to the apostle John to send a message to the churches of that day and to announce the future, all right? The future, things that are going to happen. So what? let's look at it, break it down. Jesus is revealed in, the, in, the, uh, in his heavenly host, the angel announces it. John wrote it. The churches to us, we receive it. And not only that, we're to read it and obey it. Read it and obey it. There are 12... Yes, ma'am. Verse 3 says you'll be blessed for studying that. Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. You're jumping ahead of me, teacher. <laughs> You didn't, you're jumping ahead of us. There are 12 sevens in Revelation, seven churches, seven golden lampstands, seven stars, meaning either angels, pastors of the churches, all right, seven fire stands, seven horns and eyes of the Lamb, seven spirits of God, seven angels with seven seals, seven angels with trumpets. Seven thunders, excuse me, thunders, seven heads of the beast, seven angels with seven golden, uh, seven golden bowls, and seven kings. So there's twelve sevens. Seven means something complete, final, or perfect. You know, like Selah, our daughter's name Selah, the Selah word means Paul's rest are complete as well. Our finish. So she was not our pause. She was not our rest. She is our complete. So seven in the Bible. Something is complete, final, and or perfect. All right? So we definitely know it's perfect. Why? Because it's God ordained. See, there you go. See? See, Sharon? Revelation 1.3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it. And take it to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Now, this is an action verse. What do you mean by that, Chad? Blessed who, are read, who reads it. So you have to read it out loud. You have to be action. Okay? You have to read this out loud. Blessed who are hearing it. 
You have to take action in hearing. You have to sit up straight. You have to be attentive, all right? But not only do you hear it, but you take it to heart. You take it to heart, meaning you're going to obey it because the time is near. So this is a action verse. You have to take action because it requires action for us to do it. So the natural outline of the book. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what is to take place later. So you look at it as the past, the present, and the future. Things you have seen in Revelation 1. We're going to look in, into it. Things that are now, chapters 2 and 3. And things that will take place later, chapters 4 through 22. Now, if you look, I think it is the last page of your handout. This is a condensed version on the screen of what the last page of your handout is. So, you can follow along as Moises and I teach, or as Moises teaches and I follow his lead. You can follow along to see where we're at in the book of Revelation based upon this chart. So as you see, we're going to cover the first two parts, the past and the present. So we're going to deal with the first, with the seven churches today. So that chart is about this big to, for us to really see it. So I understand it's hard to see, but at least gives you an overview of kind of where we're at. So we're going to look at the chapter one, the hast seen the vision. I've seen the vision and the two things that are, are the things that are, which are the seven churches. And if you flip one page forward from that page, you also have this chart. Please mute. And if you look at it, it breaks it down into the Ephesus period. It actually talks to each individual church. And we'll kind of look at it this real quick. If you, So you have the, the death, the ascension, the Pentecost. Here is the church at Pentecost. All right. And then it opens up. So the church is Ephesus is the backslidden church. All right. That's the first church, the first star you see on the far left. The backslidden church. Samaria is the persecuted church. All right. The Pergamus are the uh yeah, Pergamus period is the Leodosius Church, or as Moises would say, I mean, let me look here, cheat. The worldly church. And we, and I actually, meeting yesterday with Moises, we actually looked this up and it does that. It's a big $5 word for a $2 meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so the Leodosius meaning is meaning worldly of the world. All right. Uh huh. Yes. I'd have to flip flip forward for that one. Yes, the seven stages of the church. Yep. But the Lyca period is a lax church. They just sit back and go, oh, "Okay, we're relaxed. Everything's okay. Everything's hunky dory." Mm -hmm. The Sardis period, they're the dead church. The Philadelphia, they're the favored. And the Ladocian church is the lukewarm. Lukewarm church. So if you think about it, lukewarm. Um, the purpose, 
the perfect way of saying lukewarm lukewarm is Miss Betty's coffee is so good and hot and then you just sit it in the refrigerator or the freezer and let it cool off and then you pull it out and put it room temperature and you drink in room temperature coffee yeah it doesn't matter how much sugar how much milk how much whatever you put in that coffee it's still going to be room temperature and that's the way that church was and that's kind of where we fall today that's the modern day church we're not hot meaning what do you mean chad well you look at as the church a whole across the united states you look at and then you break it down to the southern baptist convention of the united states go google how many baptisms have been done in the past year just last year and the whole southern baptist convention you'd be amazed at the number how small it is all over the world all over the world but i would just the united states numbers you would be baffled at how low they are so we're the lukewarm church we're not hot we're not necessarily bringing people to the lord but we're not pushing people away we're just yeah we're here you know going through the motions so the what you have seen the revelation of jesus christ the revelation is from jesus christ which god gave him to show the ser his servant what must take place look he is coming with the clouds and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him so shall it be amen i am the alpha and the omega says the lord who is and who was and who is to come the almighty think about that it's a revelation from the lord jesus christ himself which god gave him to show us through the apostle john of what's going to happen and just as he ascended into the clouds he's going to come back in the clouds and all the people on the earth will beginning to mourn why will they mourn because their son is going to say well i thought i knew you why so shall it be amen i'm the alpha and the omega says the lord god who is who was and who is to come he's all three in great perfect perfection the almighty so john the your brother and companion in suffering and kingdom and patience endurance that are ours in jesus was on the island of patmos because of the word of god and the testimony of jesus and this is a a personal picture of moises and lucy's they've been there oh okay this is where they this is their next trip yeah this is their next trip yeah so you go to the across the bridge and then it's, yeah so john got sent to the island of patmos why because he was preaching the word and they didn't want to kill him because then he would have been a martyr so they exiled him to the island of, of patmos where thank god he he got exiled because he wrote a beautiful book that illustrates what's going to happen in the near future could happen in our lifetime it could happen in the generation after us but it's still the near future okay the vision of christ glorified as you see the lord the the rendition of the lord here he was like the son of man of course he was he's not he's he ascended in the flesh you know he he in his ascension he he got his perfect body yeah yeah they're that's right he, he 
you know, um, Rachel and I had a good friend of ours pass away last week. And I was, as I was looking at this lesson and everything, and, and I was thinking even of Ron, I said, you know what? He's already seeing this. Yeah. He's already seeing the, the, the rendition that we can only fathom. They're seeing it. He's like the Son of Man, white like wool or snow, the head of hair. His eyes are blazing fire, feet like bronze, voice like the sound of a rushing water. And his face was like the sun is shining. Now, I've never been to Niagara Falls, but I've seen some rivers roaring real fast. And whenever I hear the voice like the sound of rushing waters, mm -hmm. if it's really rushing, you have to yell to communicate. Yeah. You know, I can think of, you know, like I said, I've never been to Niagara Falls, but I can imagine the noise. Mm -hmm. Boom! Yes, a booming mm -hmm. sensation of, of the, the mighty of the water. But I, I've seen some rivers in Colorado that are, the rapids really rushing and and literally you have to yell to to be able to communicate with somebody so think of that how loud his voice is he's literally dressed in his appearance that he he demands the attention and he goes and he's going to get it he will get it if we Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, the last part that says his face was mm -hmm. like the sun shining before. And at the end of uh, Revelation, it says that there will no be sun in no. the city because the Lord will be there to shine the city. That's right. The Lord, will, the Lord will be providing our light. It's not the sun. Well, it's the S O N, not S U N. <laughs> So Jesus' letters to the seven churches, these are, um, these are some places that are still in existence. They may not be in this name, but they are still in existence, and it's in modern-day Turkey, that area. If you kind of look at a map of, of Paul's um, journeys, these are all churches that either he started or were a, a split of, of the churches. He started Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He did. He started Ephesus. So we look at it. Ephesus, the loveless church. They worked hard, patient endurance, but re in rejecting evil, and they had perseverance. That was their strength. All right. Smyrna, enduring their their suffering and poverty. But they were rich because they were so poor. All right. Pergamus, loyalty to Christ. They refused to deny him. Thyatora, the love, faith, and works, patience, endurance, constant improvement. All right. They were always looking, always looking forward to how to, how to take the gospel or how to make the church better. Sardis, only faithful few have kept their faith in the church spiritually dead. Mm. Philadelphia, keep my word and have not denied my name. In the ocean, they have no strength. Why? Because that's the lukewarm. <laughs> yeah. They're not there at the failures. They're neither hot nor cold. And this is, if you look at this statement at the end, mm -hmm. your riches make you in, impoverished. Yeah. You think about it. That is so true of the United <laughs> States today. My money will get me through it. Oh, no. You know. Oh, no. But I, I do know. That's why I say as a collective whole. Yeah. 
That's why I say it is a collective whole, not necessarily pinpointing it to people, but as a collective whole, that's where we are as a world. We're not hot as a church. We're not cold. We're just bleh. It's the best way to put it. The only thing that's good lukewarm is pizza. <laughs> that's the only thing. So the stage is, is this. Get my tongue to working. The seven stages of church history. As you see, Ephesus, the apostolic area. That's the years 33 through 64. That's basically the years of Pentecost. Okay. They were fired up. Let's go. Let's go. The Smyrna. The, the, the period of persecution. From 64 to 313 AD. The Pergam. That's the era of the official parsonage. From 313 to 606. Yeah, yes, sir. Mary. Right yes, that is also whenever the Catholic Church really came in. So the, the Pergamum. This one right here. The official. The Catholic Church. That's, the, right that's, the, that's when the Catholic Church started. Mm -hmm. During that time. Because then the church and the government married. And it become, basically the Catholic Church became not only the religion, but it was also the state. All right. Uh, Thyatira, the Middle Ages. 16, or 606 to 512 or 1520. This is also kind of, that timeline kind of, intertwines with the next one, the Sardis, the Protestant Reformation. Because right at the end of the Middle Ages is whenever Martin Luther went and nailed the 95 Theses to the Catholic Church. And he's, that's where he read in his own Bible, says the just shall live by faith, not by their works alone. And it was because of that verse that there that he, not, he nailed the 95 Theses to the Catholic Church. And which started the Protestant Reformation and the Church of Sardis. So 1520 to 1750. Then the Church of Philadelphia, you have the missionary period. This is the Protestant Reformation basically split the marriage between the church and the state, and it became separate again. Then you had the missionary period. Where, where basically the church stood up on its own and says, no, we're going to go out. We're going to stand up. Go ahead. Exactly. That's it. We're going to get away from the church, get away from the church and the, and the, and the state and go out. And then the, uh, Laodicean is the modern period is today to give you a breakdown of how the time frame. Mm -hmm. Chad, if we can say, um, in one of these stages, uh, the strongest? I would, in my opinion, I would say it was during the Protestant Reformation going into the missionary era because that's um, really, I would say, and even today. So I, if, a and B, and you can flip flop those two. Um, but you see, I think, in my opinion, I see the greatest work during the Protestant Reformation. Um, you know, you have Martin Luther, you have a lot of a lot of men and women that became martyrs for the gospel. Yes, that is that is sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, good point as well. What is this? Very good point. 
Good question too, Lucy. So if you look at it, they're all very integral in today's church. You know, without one, we couldn't have the other. And without the other, we wouldn't have the third. So it's nice to see how God flows. Now, Brother Doctor comes and wraps up the lesson as we start Thank with you, the Chad. church. So Chad is the man of the church. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to be I'm out of here. I want to be church. out of here, Chad. <laughs> so open please to Revelation chapter four, verse one. That'll be a big change from now on. Okay? You see this big old change. Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 1. So, Chad told us that the Revelation, there's three parts. Uh, actually, John told us in chapter 1, verse 19, he said, Write things that you have seen, things, things that are, and things that will happen soon. Right? Yeah. So, chapter 1 is things that John saw, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapters 2 and 3, the church. The church that were back then, but the church that represents the church era up to today. What's next? Chapter 4. There is a big change. If you see chapter 4, verse 1, what does it say there? Let's read out loud. Chapter 4, verse 1. The first two words. Just the first two words. After these things. Three words. Or just after these. After what? That's the question. No, after what? After these things. Which things, John? After these that I just told you. The churches. After the church, there is a change. So, the two words after this, metatauta in Greek, repeats several times here in Revelation from now on. After this is a break. After this, we will start a new era. What is that? Let's see. We already told you about the rapture, right? And some people don't believe in the rapture because it's not in Revelation, they say. The word rapture actually is not in the Bible. But the coming of Jesus Christ, it is in two parts. And the first part is the rapture. It has to be right here because after the church, there will be a change. So now we're going to see chapters 4 and 5, what is in there. And then chapter 6, we will start the tribulation period. Okay, so uh, just uh, an outline here. I don't know how to remove this here. It's okay. All right, this is just the, the outline that we're going to study from now on. Okay, uh, this is all the third part of Revelation. The division of the revela revelation. So the first one we're gonna see today, uh, we saw already, but we'll, we'll show you what's in there. And then next weeks we'll see everything from point to one to ten, okay, up to the final judgment in chapter twenty. So we're gonna study the, the book of Revelation from now on. So this is just uh, an outline. So let's go back to chapter four, verse one. Some people say, ah, there is no rapture because it's not in Revelation. Right. The word rapture is not in the book of Revelation, not in the Bible. But the, what's going to happen that we call rapture, yes, it is. Take a look at verse 1, chapter 4. John says, after this, I looked, and there before me was a door. Is standing open where? In heaven. In heaven. So John stopped talking about the church. Mm -hmm. He looked up to heaven. He sees a door in heaven. And the voice, remember that rushing water voice. The voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said. What did it say? 
come up here. <laughs> if that's not rapture, I don't know what that is. Because <laughs> John's here, he's part of the church. He sees heaven opened, a door open, and the voice from Jesus Christ see, tells him, Come up here, church. And I saw, and, 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 and the voice says, and I will show what must take place after this. So let's, church, shh, let's go to heaven. <laughs> this is rapture. All right. So after these things, after the church age, come up here to heaven. What should happen after these things? The period of, uh, after rap the rapture, the tribulation. <coughs> Excuse me. So the church will not be here during the tribulation period. The, how, how long is going to be the tribulation period? How long? If you were here for the Daniel 70 weeks, seven years of tribulation. The church will not be here. We are not going to be here. Why? How do we know? Because the word church that John uses 19 times in chapters 2, 1, 2, and 3. 19 times. Chapters 1 and 2 and 3. After chapter 4, you're not going to see this word again. Why? Because the church is not here. Okay? Easy as that. The next time the church will appear will be in Revelation chapter 19. The, re <clears throat> the church will come with Jesus Christ as his bride. The church is the bride of Christ. In chapter 19 only, when Christ comes back to earth to be a king here, the church will come back with him after the tribulation. So the tribulation is the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy like we studied last week, right? So, chapters 4 and 5, my friends, <laughs> for me, these two chapters are the most beautiful chapters of the Bible. Our arrival in heaven. And John had the opportunity to see when the voice says, come up here, John went up and he describes what's going to see, we're going to what we're going to see after, when we'll be raptured from here, we'll be welcome to heaven. And we'll see... I'll show you. I'll never forget. Uh, I was teaching this to the Chinese and Portuguese. My heart was so full of worship to the Lord when I studied chapters 4 and 5. And uh, on that day, I was praying for Ron, my friend, who was sick. And I texted Sharon, Sharon, can I go see you, Ron? <laughs> Sharon texted me back. He wants to see you, <laughs> right? Remember, Sharon? So uh, I went there in the morning of that day. We had a good time. It was early in the morning. The kids were still awake. <laughs> and... Uh, Katie and Cheryl, and we'll talk about many things. Ron was so talkative that day, and he spoke about wars and things. And, uh, and then Katie said, let's talk about heaven. I said, yes, let's talk about heaven. And my heart was full of these two chapters. Let's go to Revelation 4. Remember, Cheryl? Yes. We, the three of us, we read 4 and 5, and Ron was there with us. Say, Ron, this is going to, you're going to see soon. I wish I can go before you, but if you go, that's going to see, and we are all going to be there mm -hmm. to see this that is in chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation. So, first thing John saw, the vision of God's throne. Ah, I want to see it! So, somebody did this beautiful picture, very good artist who, artist who, who did that. It's beautiful. What's gonna, we, it represents here, we have the four... Uh, beautiful uh, creatures that are angels with uh, animal's face and, and men's face. We have the 24 elders sitting, we have angels, and we will be there too. God's throne, it will be blessed to see there and worship God, the triune God, 
sitting on his throne with all these angels and creatures and elders. It's going to be awesome. So Revelation chapter 4. Uh, I wish I could read for you. It's just a long time. We don't have much time. But I ask you to read Revelation 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Did you read? If you didn't, go back home today. Find time to read again. At least chapters 4 and 5 to see all these. Okay? For First we have human and angelic representatives worshiping the triune God in heaven. And we will be there. I am over there, back there, the back, back seat. <laughs> you are there too, okay? We expect this happening soon. So there is five worship in these two chapters. Five hymns of worship, okay? The first one, the four living creatures. And then the second one, the 24 elders. We don't know who they are. Okay, don't ask me because the Bible doesn't say. We don't know. But don't we have time just to read the verse? Oh, I wish. Yes. Let me see That's if we can. Good. Yeah, we're going to read some, okay? We are going to read some. Yeah, 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 we will. Don't worry. So just to tell you, okay? And then there's a choir, choirs or chorus, the 24 elders and the four living creatures working together. And then millions of me, millions, there's no way to say how many. Angels worshiping the Lord, and then every creature in heavens and earth and everywhere worshiping the Lord. So let's see. We're going to read some. Let's start with chapter 4, verse 8. He says, Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop saying. What did they say? Sing, tell with me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and it is to come. <laughs> That's the hymn that they are singing. Who? The four living creatures. The angels. A special category of angels. Those are the same that you see in Isaiah 6, chapter 6. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Yeah? We don't know. Four living creatures. It could be. We don't know. It's not. Ex it doesn't say here. Okay. And then the 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their, crown, their crowns before the throne and they say, read it with me. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Amazing. This is worship. The 24 elders worshiping the Lord. They represent the church. Okay? The 24 elders. elders we don't know, maybe you be the 12 apostles plus 12 somebody. Maybe you are one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Chapter 4. And then chapter 5, we move on. There is the, the third one. The four living creatures and the 24 elders. So first we have the four living creatures, then the 24 elders. Now they are together. It's going to be even better. They fell down before the Lamb. Each one had the harp. And they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are what? The prayers. the prayers of God's people. Our prayers are there. Amen. All of our prayers that we pray in Jesus' name without sin in our hearts are there. And they sang a new song saying, read it with me. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased God for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. What a worship. The four living creatures, angels, and the 24 elders, human beings, worshiping together. Because Jesus Christ died and saved people from all over the world. 
Amen. Right. Yes. There are prayers are there. There are two places in the Revelation that talks about our prayers. First one is here. They are worshiping, and all. And, and, and later on, we will see that the prayer that we ask, Lord, why, why so long, Lord? When are we going to 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 make justice for all this mess in the world? Those prayers, God will throw during the the the, the tribulation to to harm those who are in authority making bad things to the humanity mm -hmm. they will pay the price hold you see so uh, i think i uh, okay four preachers okay and then i look mm -hmm. and i heard the voice of many angels mm -hmm. how many no. numbering no. thousands no. upon thousands no. and ten thousand times ten thousand can you are you good in math <laughs> do the math please they encircled the, th the throne <laughs> and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were singing. Sing it with me. Worthy is the Lamb who was lame to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Amen. Ah, my heart was so full and we were together there <laughs> with Rome, praising God we're gonna see this my friends the day that christ says come up here at the rapture and this is our welcome to heaven to receive his church that he died and paid for our sins and on the day when i died chapter five is what he wanted me to read really in my house or many mansions mm -hmm. not if you are out remember your presence with the lord and yeah, that verse was there in in the the pamphlets, right? I remember. Katie was singing these songs. Amen. Sweet. Amen. There's one more. And then the last one. Five worships in chapters four and five in our welcoming to heaven. Okay? Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying what did they say together to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever the lord deserves that worship and this time is every creature every creature Animals, Other my dogs. This time is our turn, is that right? This time is our turn to pray him. Everybody, Everybody. every creature. This is, yes. This is, also this is not. Those that are in hell, yeah. Every. Remember that Jesus says, everybody will bow down their knees and worship him, even those who crucified him. They have to. Technology. Oh. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> this is our welcome. Jesus says, Welcome, my church. I died for you. And you accepted me as your Savior. Welcome to my heaven, your heaven now, your home. Home, sweet home, finally. So, how can we apply this for our lives? This is hope, isn't it? If this is not hope, I don't know what it is. How to live our Christian life until Jesus comes back? How, how should we approach to God during this time? We are living the end of the end times. Aren't you? Look around. See the news. There is no much to happen until Christ comes back. Everything is ready. Can be tonight. Praise the Lord. Can be before the game tonight. Today. Yay! 
Everything is ready. The temple. The, they're, now they're gathering stuff to actually start the building. Um, they cannot start yet, but they have everything ready. They will start after the church is gone, and then Christ will say, "Yeah, we have a deal. You can build your temple, but we will not be here. I won't be here. We won't be here." So the temple won't be built before the. Rapture. We will not. There is no way. We have to be out of here. So make sure you are saved, okay? Are you are you sure if you die now you're going to heaven? If not, stop right now, don't go any further and accept the Lord Jesus as your savior. Recognize that you are a sinner and that's why Jesus Christ came down from heaven and died on a cross for you. Right now, say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I accept the Lord Jesus as my only savior. Please, Lord, save me. Say it. Make sure you're saved. Because if Jesus Christ comes back right now and we are not saved, tribulation, everything that we're going to see from next week and beyond, from chapter 6 to the end, is for you. Second, live with joy and hope. Live a life with joy. We don't belong here, my friends. This world is not our world. I have dual citizens, three citizenships. I'm citizen from Brazil. I'm an American citizen, and I'm holy heaven citizen. That's the most important for me. My passport is there, ready. <laughs> if you don't have that passport, go back to number one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, live with vigilance and diligence, okay? What does that mean? Jesus said, be ready, pray, and wait, okay? Be active, be proactive. Don't be, oh, Jesus is coming back, oh, it's so good, I don't have to do anything. Yes, we have to do things, okay? We need to be faithful, we need to continue to worship the Lord, we need to share the good news of salvation to others who don't know yet. Please share this video, at least, if you can do anything else. Read, listen, and obey God's word. Chapter 1, verse 3, right? Blessed are those who read, hear, and obey. 5. Live with a holy and clean life. Nobody will go to heaven with a terrible, dirty life. Jesus is holy, holy, holy. He will not accept anything different than that. We need to be holy as God is holy. So if we are sinners. What can you do? For, ask him to forgive. He will forgive you. If we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful, Faithful and, just. and just to forgive our sins and clean us from all our sins. And six, talk about the gospel. Tell about the gospel. Tell that Jesus Christ is the only Savior. He came. He died. He rose again. He went back to heaven. He's preparing a home for us. You have to accept him. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Tell the world. That's why we are all missionaries in this world, okay? Support those who are doing this job. Revelation 22, 20. Let's close with this one. Let's read together. He who testified to these things said, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the book of Revelation that you gave to John and to us about things that happened, that John saw, about the church that were there in John's time and is today. We are part of that. And we are eagerly waiting for your return, Jesus Christ, because we love you. We don't belong here. 
we are not part of this world and forgive us for sometimes being part of this world and living like them but forgive us and help us to focus on you on our home come lord jesus you promised and we believe and we are waiting thank you so much we love you amen amen